This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Press freedom groups are denouncing plans by Israel to ban the award-winning TV network Al Jazeera. On Monday, Israeli lawmakers passed a bill allowing for the temporary banning of foreign broadcasters they deem to be a national security threat. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu wrote on social media, quote, Al Jazeera harmed Israel's security, actively participated in the October 7th massacre and incited against Israeli soldiers. It's time to remove the bullhorn of Hamas from our country, he tweeted. Al Jazeera, which is funded by the Qatari government, is the most widely viewed network in the Arab world, is one of the few outlets to have reporters inside Gaza. Mohammed Mawad, the managing editor for Al Jazeera's Arabic channel, denounced Israel's move to ban the network. This move, alleging Al Jazeera uh, of siding with the terrorists, is uh, baseless. Uh, it's alarming. Um, our work is uh, we we uh, we, up, we upheld the the, the highest standards of uh, journalistic uh, 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 professionalism. Al Jazeera uh, has been there in Israel and in the Palestinian territories, covering the war from both sides. Uh, we uh, our work is uh, corroborated and has been corroborated by uh, so many outlets around the world. The fact that we are. Uh, on the ground, covering from the field, uh, giving voice to the voiceless, uh, uh, bringing this account, which is not available on, on any other outlet, having correspondents covering from North Gaza, uh, reporting on the starvation uh, there, uh, is, is, is very important. And I think the Israeli government is feeling pressure by our coverage. But what, would, what we are doing is try to uh, give voice to the voiceless and uh, try and uh, make sure that uh, the suffering of civilians on the ground is heard by the entire world. That was Mohamed Mawad, the managing editor for Al Jazeera's Arabic channel. For more, we go to London. We're joined by Daniel Levy, president of the U.S. Middle East Project, former Israeli peace negotiator under Prime Ministers Ehud Barak and Yitzhak Rabin. Uh, thanks so much for joining us again, Daniel. Start off by responding to what this means and what Netanyahu is threatening. Netanyahu has passed a law. It's, it's now law in Israel <clears throat> that Al Jazeera cannot broadcast. How that is implemented is equipment taken, are people arrested, uh, are vendors who work with Al Jazeera unable to do so. That has not played out yet, Amy. That applies to uh, Israel-occupied East Jerusalem-occupied West Bank. Gaza, which is a war zone, the Al Jazeera work was not in any way dealing with Israeli vendors or, or the Israeli system, of course. And we're seeing at this stage still Al Jazeera reports uh, coming out of both spaces. Uh, but Netanyahu has passed this law. It's important to note that not a single Zionist member of the Knesset voted against the law. If we remember before October 7th, there were these big protests, save Israeli democracy from Netanyahu. Well, none of the opposition parties that are Zionist chose to oppose this law, which the Association for Civil Rights in Israel has called political, not security related, and a dangerous challenge to freedom of the press and freedom of expression, the two parties representing Palestinian Arab citizens of Israel did vote against in that parliamentary vote. And, and Daniel Levy, you know, what evidence is there, if any, that, uh, uh, as the government says, that uh, Al Jazeera actively participated in the October 7th attack? Well, there is none whatsoever. Israel has not presented any evidence. It hasn't really intended to do so. What's going on here? Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, in part, is playing to a domestic political audience. He has set Qatar, he has set Al Jazeera up to be a figure of hate. Israelis are not being shown in their own media a whole different world of problems, the level of censorship and self-censorship inside the Israeli media. So this is red meat to his own base, to the domestic politics, in a situation in which the war is not going particularly well for Israel. He's looking for distractions. I think other things that are going on here is, of course, that he doesn't want these images and this message to come out. We saw that in May 2021, Israel bombed the media tower in Gaza, the Al Jala tower, where Al Jazeera and AP and others had their offices. We remember just under two years ago, 
Shireen Abu Akhla was killed by the Israeli forces. We know that approximately 100 journalists, the family of the major Al Jazeera correspondent, while Dahdouh himself injured, his family killed. So these people have been killed. And I think another piece of this is Netanyahu uh, going not just against Al Jazeera, but, but trying to push back. And it's part of his effort against Qatar. The Israelis run uh, an aggressive campaign against Qatar in the US and elsewhere. Qatar is mediating these talks. They've met with members of the families of the hostages. They are involved with the head of the CIA and with the head of the Israeli Mossad. But Netanyahu has systematically and frequently tried to undercut and undermine these negotiations. And this is another example of him doing so. And how can he get away with this? It's the same as the story of world uh, central kitchen. It's the same as how come this has created the worst hunger crisis anywhere in the world, according to the UN Secretary General. The number of Palestinian civilian deaths, UN workers, aid workers, because he can get away with it, because the United States, his major backer and defender, continues to provide the arms and the weapons, the latest including 2,000 pound bombs. So your comment on this, do you think the U.S. should cut off the arms flow to Israel? I mean, this is very significant coming from you. You are an advisor to past prime ministers. Uh, you're a peace negotiator, a nego negotiator under two prime ministers of Israel. Do you think the U.S. should cut off the arms flow? I think it depends, Amy. If the administration want to continue to see civilian deaths at an astronomical scale, a humanitarian catastrophe unparalleled. More than three times the number of children, according to Save the Children, killed in this conflict in Gaza, as are killed in every conflict around the world in an entire year. If they want to continue to see that level of destruction, if they want to continue to see U.S. complicity in that, the U.S. violating the provisional measures of the International Court of Justice, the U.S. being the prime violator of international law, rather than its upholder, then go ahead and continue to provide those offensive, destructive, horrific weapons. If, by contrast, the U.S. wants to be within the law and wants to end this war, and by the way, to successfully advance the negotiations to get a ceasefire and to get the hostages out, if that's the goal of the Biden administration, stop telling me you're heartbroken. Stop telling me this is, this is so sad. We're talking to the Israelis. They should do it differently. Let's work out how to do Rafa. Stop telling me that Netanyahu is a problem. You're the problem, because you're the enabler, you're the facilitator. Every single day that you continue to back this horrendous war, which is tragic for Palestinians, and I would argue doing nothing to advance Israeli security either, in fact, quite the opposite, and which now risks a broader regional escalation and conflagration after the latest provocation in Syria by Israel. And uh, Daniel Levy, I wanted to ask you about that. We have only about a minute, but the uh, this uh, latest provocation that you talked about, the attack in, in Syria, do you sense that Netanyahu, given the deep unpopularity that he has and the pro massive protests against him, is even willing to escalate this conflict more to be able to maintain his power? It's a crucial question, and I don't see how we can't take that very seriously. We have to take that seriously. He's bombed a diplomatic compound. He's done something which was clearly escalatory and, and, and a, a new level of provocation. Will Iran and Hezbollah maintain the kind of strategic patience that they've shown? Will there be pressure on this? There's clearly not pressure to save Palestinian civilians, but is this where there might be pressure? I think we have to take very seriously that Prime Minister Netanyahu needs this war to continue and is willing and has already gone to extreme lengths to do so. There is a protest movement uh, in Israel, not unfortunately against the war, but to uh, prioritize getting a deal for the hostage release. We need everyone to lean into that, which requires real leverage and a real cost for Israel for continuing on this devastating path.